you. And uh, after lunch, it's a little bit uh, a responsibility to, to start with the panel, and we will try to be a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, say, happy and uh, active. Okay. So um, I, I call immediately the the other uh, panelists, and I start uh, just looking at uh, the the people here. And uh, I start from uh, Leonardo Mazzini from Tale Serena Space Italia, is the CTO of Tale Serena Space Italia. And then Angelo Fontana is uh, uh, proposal manager, I think, of uh, C okay, vice senior vice president of proposals uh, for uh, Avio, and uh, Pierluigi Birrelli, general director of uh, CTEL, Stefano Antonetti, uh, it's somewhere, okay. As, uh, you are improving your situation. Uh, and uh, from uh, the orbit, uh, it's um, responsible for uh, um, sales and, um, uh, and um, uh, external development. And uh, uh, finally, we have a CTO of Telespazio, Marco Brancati. Sorry, he was the first stand alone. He was stand alone, sorry. Okay, so. Uh, no, no, okay, explicit, I will say. Okay, so uh, this morning we had a lot of talk about uh, opportunity uh, for um, utilization of additive manufacturing technique. And uh, I've seen that we have made a lot of progress in this last seven years. So it's, it's really appreciated what we have, but uh, we knew about that because we follow as agency a big amount of contract and project and developments through ESA and through, uh, and through national programs. So for us it's clear, but uh, I think that uh, we have now five representative of the users of, uh, of these technologies. The ones we said, I said this morning, were expecting to deliver one satellite per day to, 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 to build this constellation. And, uh, and there are, I represented all uh, our industries. Uh, as has been said also, uh, Italy has developed all capability in all fields. So from ground to space, to the access to space, uh, we are uh, making telecommunication, navigation, all the domain, we are present with our capability with important primes. And uh, that is our particular case in Europe uh, and it's, uh, we, we are alone in Europe in this. So this is a really a particular case. So we have also a small and medium enterprise. We are able, we are on one of the countries that has a small and medium enterprise, uh, enterprises able to deliver full systems. And we are, we have a company like uh, the Orbit is here, but we have other, um, a lot of other small companies able to realize a small system also working in this space. You probably, many of you uh, can uh, remember what happened with the Disha Cube, where we were able to capture the impact of uh, the NASA mission on the, on the asteroid. So that was a, an Italian CubeSat that was uh, following the mission and uh, was able to, uh, to uh, make a sort of uh, journalist in space and uh, just uh, uh, capturing that image when the, uh, the, the NASA satellite impacted on the, on the, on the, on the asteroid. So uh, I would like to start with, uh, with uh, one question for everybody. And the question is uh, how this new technique has modified your way of doing pro space product? This is uh, the, 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 the question that uh, we were going to, we, we were, were um, uh, going to, to, to raise at the beginning of this, uh, of this argument of, of uh, space, uh, of additive manufacturing. And uh, it, it's not only uh, uh, um, additive manufacturing, but it's a lot of new technologies influencing your, your, uh, your um, business model. So, how this is influencing your organization and your way of doing space product. So I will start from uh, Angelo and coming back. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. So uh, 
yes, in my quotes here, um, this quote, let's say, reflects uh, uh, what actually is um, going on in our company, in my company, uh, and uh, especially in the factories, in the plants of this company. So we provide access to space, so we do rockets. Uh, we are uh, experiencing a transition uh, from solid rocket motor based launchers to liquid engines launchers. Why? And this is thanks, this is driven by ALM. This is what I, I tried to capture here. So, why are we doing this? Uh, sorry to be very blunt here, but uh, we are doing this to catch up with 20 years of delay. Uh, that we have compared to our competitors in the USA. Of course, I'm talking about uh, launchers once again. Uh, I would like to um, show you uh, what I'm saying. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, I had a roadmap. Yes. It, it may seem very complicated, this roadmap, but if you follow me, uh, I will show you that it's very simple. Starting from the left-hand side, you see two launchers, I mean two versions of the same launcher, that is Vega, uh, Vega and Vega C, the launcher that we are, we have been funded thanks to ASI funds provided to ESA and then get back to, to industry. So these two launchers have been flown for 10 years, so we made 22 launchers and they are solid rocket motor based launcher, okay? If you go right, you see that we have another launcher, the Vega E that introduces uh, for the first time here in, in Europe, uh, a liquid engine based on LOX, liquid oxygen and methane. And if you go on the right hand side, you will see another item still to be fully funded by ESA, but starting to be funded thanks to the PN, um, the National Recovery Plan, that is the Vega Next. This item, this launcher, will be fully liquid engine based. Uh, launcher once again. So why this is important? So on the other side of the ocean, they have been doing this for 20 years, I said before, and there is a reason as to that they are doing this, because uh, this is having a launcher like this, it's much cheaper uh, compared to our rockets, because they are able to get into orbit uh, payloads with some kilo dollars per kilo, I'm talking about 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 dollars per kilo. Why? We have an order of magnitude greater than that. So we have to do this way. And to go this way, sorry, I said we have to go this way. And to go this way, we have to switch to these liquid engines and we can do this thanks to ALM that enables uh, thanks to uh, enables something like reusability that lowers a lot the cost. So when it comes to combine, um, let, let me say the requirements that uh, uh, our engineer ask to these models, and I can mention, for example, the complex geometry of some components. I can mention uh, high performance. I'm talking about. Uh, engines uh, that have a thrust as high as 60 tons, so it's not peanuts, and uh, they, ha they have to have low mass, because for us, the lower the mass, the bigger the payload that we can carry to orbit. So when it comes to combine all these parameters, we cannot do that with traditional uh, technologies, but we have to go for uh, ALM. And we are doing this uh, I can state that 70% uh, of the main components of that engine I'm talking about are ALM manufactured. Uh, by the way, I can mention uh, three of these elements. First of all, the combustion chamber, uh, then we have the nozzle extension, and then we have the turbo bombs of, made with ALM. And we are talking about components one meter high and 60 centimeters wide, let's say, in diameter. So this is the reason why we are switching our production to uh, from yeah. solid rocket motors to engine, liquid engines, thanks to ALM. So thank you. Uh, this is a real case where additive manufacturing has made the difference. 
and uh, uh, just to inform Correct. you that uh, also the agency is changing the way of making contracts because uh, with, uh, we are uh, uh, developing a new engine for, uh, for uh, the upper stage where we are applying a, a method of fast prototyping instead of the uh, typical WCO uh, call for the qualification and the development of, uh, of design. So it's, uh, it's something that it changes also institutional side. So it's not only from uh, their own internal processes. So thank you, Angelo. To Correct. Thank you. So uh, Leonardo, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, organization. I, uh, I work for a company that makes uh, uh, satellites, uh, satellites for uh, navigation, uh, observation, uh, uh, telecommunication, and so on. Um, it's a big, a big company with many units. And uh, we had to face uh, in the recent years, let's say in the recent last uh, five years, um, a number of uh, technological, uh, let's say, uh, roadmaps uh, dealing with new technologies, and additive was one of them. But we had uh, the digital to manage the digital transformation as well, the, tele the artificial intelligence, the quantum revolution, uh, a number of these technologies. Our units, our engineering units, uh, started to work on these technologies, but clearly there was no uh, preparation among uh, all these uh, uh, all the company to, to deal with that so we had to somehow coordinate uh, all these developments within uh, the central directorate and uh, we had to form new engineers with a vision on, on these topics so now we have uh, roadmaps for all these technologies in particular today we speak uh, of uh, additive manufacturing and uh, clearly, we have introduced the use of this technology um, also with partnerships, uh, making, partnership, uh, making partnerships with other companies uh, to make uh, uh, many, many uh, different, uh, um, let's say, uh, elements of the satellite. And, uh, for example, in, uh, in, uh, I, I go through some, some examples uh, like uh, filters, uh, soup, filters uh, uh, radio frequency filters, wave guides, like a uh, support for uh, any um, for sensors, for uh, uh, any, any kind of uh, box. So we, we have used it very, very thoroughly in what we call the tertiary structure, which is the structure which is not, uh, uh, which is dedicated to single items on the satellite. Very, very recently, we have introduced uh, the use of additive manufacturing also uh, in the construction of the primary structure of a platform of a small satellite, the smallest we have ever built, which is called Nimbus. And we have done uh, so because uh, this uh, is a, a technology capable to accelerate uh, um, the production of, of the structure and uh, also is a technology that is flexible for small modifications that are necessary to introduce in the structure. I want to show an example that, in my opinion, is extremely well, uh, well suited. If you go to the next slide, yes. And I, I like uh, a lot of this kind of application that, in my opinion, is uh, an area where additive shows uh, very well these characteristics uh, in, in terms of business. You, you know that prob you probably know that uh, in space, uh, uh, if you don't work on mega constellation, which now we are, we are going also to, to work on that, but uh, typically the, the amount of no recurring uh, is uh, very large. We have to start from scratch in a number of uh, uh, in a number of areas, and in particular for the electronics. And uh, the, the the time that we dedicate to the recurring part is uh, extremely long. We, it can take, take one or two years. So uh, with additive uh, manufacturing, we can build today boards. And uh, if we make errors, we can uh, uh, repair those errors within days. While doing the same with the previous technology would require months, let's say six, eight months. And this is a, a basic 
uh, a dramatic, a dramatic uh, change in, in uh, the way we make business because uh, uh, we spend uh, in doing these boards, electronic boards, uh, uh, boards uh, having RF or analog or digital uh, signals. Uh, uh, it takes uh, many, many uh, people, resources working uh, there and, uh, and many, many months of work. And uh, making errors uh, is uh, the usual uh, rule, it's the rule of, of the game, it's not uh, an extraordinary case. This is my witness. Thank you. Maybe some uh, some additional uh, asset could be developed when the four meter chamber will be ready, four meter by four meter, because we did something for exploration. Next, uh, habitat. Okay, so that's it. So, uh, Marco Balcati from Telespazio. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, so, let me say, uh, it is clear that in this, uh, in this panel, uh, I represent the, the only uh, company out of the five which is not a manufacturer So, uh, well, the reason why I underline this is because uh, the uh, AM technology, the additive manufacturing technology, is not technology that we are used for developing our products. But of course, the technologies, the new ones, are absolutely important for our work. In general, let me say, which is new technologies bring innovation, but which is the purpose of feeding innovation? Usually, the reasons are two. First, there is the need to update the legacy products, which implies, of course, to improve the uh, performances of the products that you already have in your portfolio, or better to, to, to deliver the associated services in a cheaper way. The second purpose, of course, is to develop new solutions, and for us, again, products means services, and uh, this allows, of course, to get some additional uh, market shares or new market shares with respect to the uh, traditional position. So what are, uh, what are the, the legacy products for us uh, which uh, uh, benefit from the utilization of, uh, of new technologies? I think it's, it's well known that the services we provide are subcoms or telecommunication services, uh, are geo information services, as well as uh, services based on navigation everything uh, uh, provided to our uh, ground assets. And so it is clear that if we talk about uh, um, digitalization in general of a ground segment, if we talk of a virtualization, utilization of, uh, of cloud, it is clear that this is something that has affected our legacy uh, production in terms of services. And so the um, concerning the ground segment, the update of all the suite that allows us to provide services in the different areas is something that was uh, uh, implemented, almost completed, let me say. Um, of course, relying a lot on, uh, on, uh, on these uh, new techniques, but also relying, for instance, on the utilization of artificial intelligence in order to uh, improve the quality and let me say also the reducing the cost of our uh, of our operations and of course uh, looking at uh, the traditional business of geo information it is clear that artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning uh, are techniques uh, that are very well utilized in that environment also concerning the subcom for instance nowadays uh, there, there are no uh, telecommunication services only based on Life, but hybridization in this respect, thanks to the, the, the possibility to include the satellite in the 5G and, uh, and the 6G uh, protocols, uh, is, uh, is something that, uh, that of course uh, allows us to improve our uh, uh, legacy production. But what are the new uh, services? So, what are the, the portion of market we are going to target thanks to? Um, several of them. I will start with, uh, let me say, a new approach concerning uh, uh, telecommunications. Then I'll move to, uh, to uh, in-orbit servicing, space situation awareness, 
the digital twin approach in order to describe uh, the whole earth. This is something that uh, really uh, uh, is, go is going to give a perspective very, very important. But also the PNT applications, because again, navigation and uh, localization services based on satellite are fine, but uh, the techniques which allow to take into account about GNSS, but also situations where uh, when uh, GNSS is denied, of course, uh, uh, allow you to provide better, uh, better applications in this respect. So, how this impacted our, our organization? In order to do that, we understood, take into account that Telespatch is a group. So we are, we are uh, um, organized on nine different legal entities. So it was a duty of the CTIO uh, organization to um, develop something that could have supported the activity of the engineering teams so of all the different legal entities uh, uh, outside, outside Italy. Um, and so the development of uh, federated labs, uh, uh, concurrent uh, and cooperative design facility, which was accessible from remote, was an improvement in that respect. But going to the uh, new uh, services I just mentioned, should be the, the, following, uh, the following chart, we identified several, seven different new domains. And uh, these domains actually are organizations which are cross line of business, so uh, cross official units. And the goal of this is to develop uh, a, a common roadmap for each of those items with the contribution of the engineering team, the program management team, the commercial team, the legal team. So this is uh, an organization which uh, goes in a transversal way through the official one, let me say, uh, with the different uh, time scale. So each of those ones has a different roadmap uh, with, uh, uh, let me say, time basis uh, which, uh, which changes from one to the other. There are some of them which have a lower PRL, PRL some of them are uh, much more mature. And, uh, and uh, they represent also the way we prepare, for instance, our budget for uh, the uh, activities which go beyond the, the legal uh, illegal one. Oh, thank you. This is a very interesting point because uh, Telespazio is a particular case here. We heard uh, this morning uh, Isa talking about uh, uh, the next approach will be to require services to the supply chain. So if you look at these uh, seven innovative domains, in all of them, the orientations go through services. So our industry is preparing and uh, so Telespazio is a service company because they are working on telecommunication, navigation, uh, and uh, earth observation. So they are already orienting due to the um, inclusion of these new technologies and new capabilities, new performances, and uh, to the request of institutions to have services more than uh, produce hardware for making things. So this is the way we have to go to. So. And, and the, the, the new technology are influencing this approach. So this is very important. Thank you for uh, giving us this uh, uh, overview of all, how all these new technology are impacting the, the, the future. So this uh, Pierluigi, um, a new company growing very fast in Puglia. So it's, uh, this is your, your uh, stage. Can you hear me? Yes. It was Thank you, Roberto. Also before. Okay. So Thank you, Roberto, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm talking, I'm here on behalf of uh, Mrs. Chiara Pertosa, the CEO of uh, CITEL. Uh, she wants to welcome all of you here in Puglia. CITEL is a company headquartered in, uh, in the Puglia region, very close to, to here and uh, she was unfortunately hampered to join this uh, venue uh, for a uh, very last minute personal issue. So uh, welcome again uh, in Puglia. I, I want to spend a few words about uh, CITEL. Uh, CITEL is a company that is uh, growing, uh, started from uh, uh, avionic components, uh, electronic units for satellites and 
electrical propulsion for satellites and now uh, CITAL is growing in the system domain. Uh, CITAL is in charge together with uh, Thales, Leonardo and Airbus uh, of Italy of the uh, Platino uh, program. This program is uh, funded by the Italian Space Agency and uh, uh, the peculiarity of this program is to build a satellite platform uh, that can be arranged for uh, several different uh, functions. And uh, it is really a, an, a very, very smart uh, vision of the Italian Space Agency to fund this program because as we can witness all over the world, uh, this uh, concept of constellation uh, of small satellites in LEO is very, very much uh, diffused, uh, uh, most, mostly for telecommunication. The, uh, the, the, the value of, uh, of the Platinum program is that uh, there is a platform that can be adapted to several different uh, missions. And uh, uh, the proof of that is that currently we are, uh, uh, we have together with our partners, uh, Thales, Airbus and Leonardo in our portfolio, uh, several satellites for very different applications. One, the first one will be uh, the synthetic aperture radar for Earth obs observation developed by Thales and then uh, we uh, are cooperating with NASA JPL through an uh, RC NASA cooperation uh, for uh, a special particle detector instrument that uh, is being is called Maya and uh, it is being developed by the JPL uh, of NASA and uh, uh, after that there, there will be these are two missions for Earth observation but we are also involved uh, in, uh, in another mission uh, which is about quantum key distribution. Our customer is a private company, SES, the giant of telecommunication, that in the context of a uh, European uh, uh, space agency and the European Union uh, uh, program is developing this technology of uh, uh, quantum uh, transmission uh, uh, in space. Uh, they selected uh, uh, the Platinum platform uh, because of uh, these characteristics of the multifunctional. And finally, uh, Platinum will be also part of the uh, Iride constellation of, uh, of, uh, in the context of the Italian uh, Next Generation Europe uh, uh, funding. Uh, and in this case, uh, the platform will be equipped with uh, an hyperspectral instrument uh, developed by Leonardo. Uh, this, the, the most important fact is that uh, this platform uh, is uh, for the 8% of its value always equal for the different mission. And this uh, uh, is changing the way of industrializing this, uh, this product because it allows us to think in the serial production, in series. And this is one of the main reasons that uh, uh, obliged CITEL to approach uh, the uh, new technologies and uh, additive manufacturing uh, uh, in order to reduce the cost of series production and uh, improve the performance of, of the product. So CITEL is exploring this technology since uh, some years and we performed some uh, tentative uh, that were about uh, structure and, uh, and other parts, but now we are developing uh, a, a program uh, on, a, a, on a mission critical component. And this is about uh, our electrical propulsion system. Maybe I have uh, uh, a slide uh, where there are some Pictures. Yes, here it comes. So, uh, we in our technology we have uh, uh, the electrical propulsion uh, thrusters, and also this component of uh, the spacecraft will be produced in uh, in uh, series because uh, all the Leo constellation are equipped with this kind of uh, propulsion, and with the problem of space traffic management. 
every satellite will be obliged in the future to, uh, to have on board the maneuvering capability and this can be provided by electric propulsion. So uh, the market uh, of this kind of product is very vast and uh, uh, we want to develop, uh, to use this technology in order to uh, make it uh, easier to produce this kind of, uh, uh, of components. And uh, when, but when we uh, talk about the mission critical component, uh, we did not think useful to go straight uh, to the redesign of the of the component uh, uh, in uh, uh, in order to face first uh, the difficulty of uh, uh, of designing for uh, the performance, and then to face the difficulty to modify the process. So we are keeping the design as it is and we are trying to adapt the additive layer manufacturing to it as it is. In the second phase we will go to the complete redesign in the additive manufacturing perspective of the component. This is uh, this component is uh, the um, uh, is the inlet uh, of the xenon of, or argon uh, gas that uh, uh, provide the uh, acceleration of, uh, of the thruster and uh, uh, this is a very difficult component to be manufactured in the traditional way so the reason uh, that pushed us to the additive uh, manufacturing was to simplify the production process and we had to face uh, uh, not uh, I, I've been hearing about uh, very large dimension uh, for additive for us, uh, the problem is the opposite. It's the very uh, small, miniaturized uh, dimension of this component uh, that, that gave us a uh, uh, lot of problem uh, about uh, uh, shrinkage uh, and uh, other problems uh, in, the, in the additive uh, manufacturing and uh, other problems so, such as the compatibility between two different materials, steel and, and copper. Uh, so uh, finally, with our partner Hydro of uh, Varese, we uh, achieved uh, this, this target uh, and we uh, have manufactured the first component of, uh, of this type. Now we are going to test them in a laboratory environment and, uh, and then we will uh, perform all the process qualification according to the ECSS. Okay, good luck with the ECSS for additive manufacturing. It will be the real enemy. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we, we will see how to do because it's our project, so we will support Sure it, it is. No, no problem. So now we go to a new New paradigm of space is a new company that uh, has, uh, no, has the, the, the mantle of this company is to be the innovative company. So, the orbit, please. That's for waking everyone, everyone up. Okay. Thanks, Robert, for the introduction. By the way, thank you for inviting us to this beautiful location, this beautiful town in the middle of Puglia. And uh, indeed, absolutely, that's uh, added manufacturing which is definitely an innovation. And uh, as uh, a wannabe innovative company, we try to get all the benefits out of it. The first benefit we got out from additive manufacturing is uh, fast prototyping. After all, as the orbit, um, our goal is to you know to make market-driven products and services as quick as possible and as efficient as possible. That's pretty normal for every product, right? So, um, rapid prototyping would allow really to iterate very quickly around a product. Let me make you an example. We were we needed to you know give some specification for um, hinges for solar panels, and literally we made a couple of examples of those hinges in our premises. We have a small 3D printer uh, with added layers, and uh, it took three hours. And we really could realize many things, many requirements, many um, constraints that we could give to the manufacturer to make us the actual the actual project. So we did in three hours, so it probably would take three weeks. And uh, we put into practice also this uh, innovative cycles. So now we have uh, um, we are 
just two days ago we acquired our flight model of a new propulsion system. It's a chemical propulsion system repropellant completely developed in additive manufacturing thanks to our partner Sofia from, from Campania. And, uh, and thanks to that, we could develop from scratch up to flight model in 15 months a complete propulsion system, chemical repropellant propulsion system of the 15 Newton uh, Trust Plus. I will be flying that in, uh, in November. So that's, a, I mean, that's really a great shortening of, of time for such, such a system. And that was also possible through uh, additive manufacturing. And now we are moving to other experience on additive manufacturing for the main structure of our spacecraft. So far we have launched 10 spacecraft in two years now for space transportation space. And, uh, and the core structure is we are exploring how to do it in, uh, in additive manufacturing with our partner Caracol, for instance, with a very innovative technology that I will not be able to explain how it is. This, but that makes uh, uh, our uh, structure lighter and possibly more performant. So this is all very important. It's very important to capture these new, um, these new um, possibilities that the uh, innovative technology gives to us in perspective for the, for the future. And it's also very important that that would change a little bit the way you design things. Because if you need to test more, if you need to test more, you need a little bit less of analysis. So probably you need more test engineer and less system and you know, all you know guys, that you are hiring a lot in this period because it's very likely there's a lot of injection of capital in the space market. How diversifying hiring and not like focusing only on analysts and maybe being able to go to high, um, and not graduated students from high school that can do testing, be very important to make your workforce more diversified and you can be hired, hiring very fast. So, um, additive manufacturing, so, Give advantages both from um, market, market capture point of view, technology point of view, but also design analysis and hiring and uh, teaming point of view. So that's a, what we define in really a disruption in the way you design a space system. Thank you. And just to say that our next uh, month will be the 12th, uh, 11th, 11th uh, platform we will go to launch based on private totally private uh, uh, funding. A little bit of from you too. Okay, a little <laughs> bit, but uh, the major part is uh, totally private funding. This is very, very interesting uh, case uh, for Italy. There are other cases, but very few. So just to be, to be honest and uh, you to tell this. So uh, just a uh, uh, quick question for uh, all of you, and because we have to be fast, one minute, and just uh, uh, we have had a lot of uh, uh, improvement made. Can you give us uh, your idea, some word that you want to leave for the floor, for the people here that are working for you, for uh, growing your capabilities, which is missing? What, where, where, are, where are we have to go in order to, to improve your uh, capability? Because this is very important. The message you want to leave to people that are working on the key technology so this is uh, and the difficulties that you uh, face sometimes when you uh, face these new cameras that can give you more performances and lower costs this well I can go actually very fast on that because um, before I answer to this question and two CEOs before uh, chief executive officers mentioned the relationship that we have with them. Uh, so I'm talking about Prima, Additive uh, and uh, Velo 3D. We are uh, cooperating with them so we cannot call them suppliers because we are, we are having partnership together because we want to be with them not only uh, printing something and then uh, relating on other subjects. We, we want to have a holistic approach, mastering uh, all the process. So uh, my message to them is to follow us in this uh, venture, let's say, because as I was saying before, we have to catch up with our competitors in, uh, in the US to make it cheaper. Uh, that is why we are doing this. And that is why we have to do this to 
ramp up our launches up to, let me say, Roberto, five to six launches per year, if we, this is possible, maybe more. Maybe more, yes, I can, should I can, I can just be happy about that. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you see that the business, this business, business is on our side, so stay with us and we will do okay. this. Thank you. Sorry. But I try to be short as well. Uh, what we have in the landscape, uh, we have in the landscape an increasing and increasing, uh, let's say, participation of the ATT and the new technology in the space application. Let's think uh, to our landscape uh, the building of a new space factory for Nimbus production in uh, uh, tens of units satellite per month to make mega constellations, to make constellations, um, we need uh, important, uh, important, uh, and all this uh, in additive, and also using other new technologies. In the landscape, we have uh, the design of new radar antennas uh, in additive manufacturing. We have uh, space manufacturing, the, the possibility to manufacture directly in space, uh, uh, space, uh, let's say, equipments, and the moon manufacturing. So we have many, many applications where, uh, let's say, the RDD manufacturing, and I would say also the new technologies, I'm thinking to artificial intelligence in particular, are uh, the, uh, let's say, enabling factor of practice. So we have space for you, we of the space industry, we have space for uh, newcomers in this area. Also because we don't want to, to implement all these new technologies uh, by ourselves. Thank you. Uh, for what concerns ourselves, I'd say, uh, probably uh, it's a double, uh, double kind of message. It's first, let me say that especially going uh, through the activities uh, for some of those uh, domains I mentioned before, we had the, the need and the opportunity to in, increase and improve our relationship with the startups on one side, as well as with uh, uh, non-space companies on the other side, particularly referring to what is relevant to space exploration. It is clear that uh, specific technologies uh, can be brought to a service uh, provisioning company in an easier way from uh, uh, small, uh, very focused uh, uh, companies. And so in that respect, uh, it is important to us uh, to learn more and more how to interface with them, but also to listen, uh, as we are used to do as a service company, to the need coming from companies who are interested now in being part of uh, the space, uh, new, the new space economy, but with different needs because they, are, uh, they don't come from a space experience. Just to make an example, to understand the requirements for specific connectivity from uh, the Earth, uh, the moon surface, uh, to the, the, the constellation uh, going in some years around the moon and then back, it is important to understand what is the reason why. On the other side, since a space uh, um, a service provision company is uh, used to uh, make everything uh, uh, work in terms of uh, business plan, I think that we can provide this kind of, of experience uh, interfacing back with uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, companies and uh, again, let all the new space economy economy. Uh, I join... Uh the, the position of my colleagues. Uh, this is uh, a, a case, one of the case of spinning of a technology into the space domain. Uh, we were used, at least uh, people ancient like I am, uh, were used to spin off technologies to other uh, sector of business. Now we are uh, uh, in, a, in a reverse uh, uh, process to spin in a technology that uh, has been reached that reached uh, a maturation uh, level uh, in other domains and we want to bring it into space uh, to do that we have to cooperate very much to change a little bit our mindset in the, in the space companies and to learn how to cooperate to the, with the uh, uh, the people who uh, developed this technology in order to 
how they say, spatialize the technology in order uh, to make it uh, uh, suitable for space application because space is hard and ECSs are very hard. Okay. You know that I agree, so. Yeah, well, uh, when I take to the future added manufacturing, I cannot think other than in space manufacturing. So, if I would give a suggestion to in which direction to go to the future, I would definitely say that because, uh, you know, boats are, not ma are made on the sea and not made on the mountains. So, why satellites have to be made on Earth? when they have to go to space. So for me, added manufacturing is really the next frontier that will allow us to go the really that jump that will allow us to make our society really a space society. Thank you. This is a good challenge. So uh, this is uh, this is a uh, food for thought and I think that this is also the confirmation that uh, events like this are very important because we need to share the language, the ideas, the way of doing things and thinking. So it's uh, organizing our work. So it's very important. Thank you again. And uh, I hope to have a very soon another opportunity for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for. Uh, Thank you.